In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to actually retrieve data from an SQLite database in Android. In our Starlog DB Manager, we'll have our helper class already set up that will take care of our database and create it or update it as needed. I collapse this internal class by clicking on the minus icon here. So I have a clearer view at my Starlog DB Manager. First of all, just to tidy this a little up, let's create a close method that accompanies the open method. MDB helper dot close. And now we'll define a method to retrieve the database entries from the database table Starlog. To facilitate that, I create a few more static constants. One for the table name, for the ID field, for the log text field, and for the timestamp. So for fetching all entries of our star log, I create a function fetch all. I have now put in here void, but of course this is supposed to retrieve and to return the results. And for results coming from a database, that would be a cursor. And that of course should also return a cursor. But in fact, we won't return null, we want our SQLite database class to handle this request, so we send a query to that database. So we query the database for the following things. If you want to have a look at the signature, place a cursor inside of the brackets, hit control string space. And there you can have a look at the signature. It's quite long. In this case, we are using this constructor. And you see the first parameter is the table name, which we have defined as a class constant. The second parameter are the columns to be retrieved, given as an array of string. The selection is sort of the where statement, followed by selection arguments, by a group by statement, by having pretty standard SQL stuff. So in our case, we set the table name. We create a new array of string for those three columns to be retrieved. And we can set all other parameters to null because we don't want to select, nor sort, nor order. Let's have a look at the signature of this query method. How it occurs about the method name and a snippet of information will appear. You can see that in fact returns a cursor. The first parameter will be the table name. The second, an array of strings for the columns or the fields I want to retrieve. The selection is that what is called a WHERE statement in SQL. You can also call it a filter. Selection arguments. Group by having an order by other parts of a SELECT statement in SQL. All not needed here because we want all the entries. So I've provided the table name, a new area of strings, with the three field names I want to retrieve, and all other parameters set to NULL. Now we can go back to Starlog after saving this one. Here and now get rid of this array adapter. And in order not to pollute the onCreate method too much, I create a separate method I call updateList, because that's what it's supposed to do. Every time it is called, it should fetch the data from the database and update the list. And this method will look like this. I'll need a cursor. In this case, I'll turn this M cursor to a field this class. Now I retrieve the cursor pointing at the first item of the database entries from the DB manager, as we've just specified before. And then I'll hand this cursor to this activity for managing. Let's skim over these lines, we'll come back to those later. The other interesting part is this adapter. You already know that we need an adapter for the list. And for going through a cursor and putting its contents into a list, we just take the simple cursor adapter. We'll have to import it first. I call this adapter log entries, because that's what it is. And then as usual, I create my new adapter, handing in the context, which is this application, the view to display the cursor's content, the cursor itself, which is M cursor, this one, this managed cursor, and finally, the columns to take the data from and the IDs of the view elements to put the data into. These are both arrays. 
And now we're coming back to those declarations. This is the one for the fields, which is similar to the declaration in the Starlog DB manager, but in fact only misses the ID part. And the second one is an array of ints, which means an array of the layout IDs. And these correspond to what is inside of this simple list item 2. This predefined simple list item 2 carries two text views, one with the ID text 1 and the second with ID text 2. Take note that this array has exactly the same number of elements as the other one. Well, that's required because then Android knows that it will have to put the data from the cursor taken from the field timestamp into the first text view and the second one into the second. Let's save and start. That's just to prove that there are no errors indeed. That's the old version. There it is. In this case, it displays the empty message because, of course, we haven't yet entered anything into the database. Let's have a look at the finalized version. So in the end, it will look like this. And there we have a log entry, the star date, and the content. And that's all there is to know for now about reading from SQLite databases in Android.